As if we didn't have enough to worry about, now there are people on the internet coming to ruin your favorite cartoons as well. Those absolute sons of butts. From fascist smurfs to apocalyptic hellscapes, here are 20 dark cartoon theories that will ruin your childhood. Number 20. The Smurfs are white supremacists. Now, all texts are open for interpretation, that's part of the territory, but when someone writes an academic theory about a beloved retro cartoon, then you know a lot of people are going to have an opinion about that. The Smurfs is a cartoon that originated in Belgium, of all places, in 1958, and frankly, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that it might therefore contain opinions that are offensive and severely outdated in our modern world. But the theory of Antoine Bueno went further than to point out the colonialism and racism that's present in certain episodes, he made a whole theory that places the Smurfs as a political dictatorship which represents both Stalinist communism and Nazi Germany, complete with deeply anti-Semitic views. Now, it's not so much a crackpot idea. Bueno has meticulously researched and argued his case in a most thorough academic fashion, but this has also made people very upset as their childhood memories are called into question by his analysis. He argues that, and this is a valid point, all popular works are inherently saying something about society. Murfett can be anything she wants to be. It means that all the creative works, whatever their aim, cannot help but reflect the times in which they're made. While it seems that Bueno may have pushed his own theory beyond the boundaries of a cartoon, there may be a grain of truth in the idea of popular culture reflecting its era. So, the Smurfs were created in an era of Cold War paranoia, in the darkness of post-war Europe, and as colonial views were still prevalent through much of the West. Perhaps he does have a point after all. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Yes, this is a definitely real story about a family that was created in a lab to look like real-life Simpsons characters. Because of course, there's every single reason on Earth to do something like that. Would you want to look like a deranged version of your favorite cartoon character? Which one would it be? And just how far would you go to achieve that? As always, let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag FancyTopic. Number 19. All the Rugrats are dead except for one, and it's obvious if you pay attention, apparently. The Rugrats was one of Nickelodeon's most wholesome and innocent shows back in the day. The adventures of these toddlers and young children were a joy to watch and really touched base with the essence of American family life as a whole. There was nothing that was ever all that crazy or wild, and for the most part, the adventures that the children had would be no different than any other child across the great land of the free and the home of the brave. Even Angelica, whose bratty tendencies and mischievous nature was a fairly mild character compared to what her real-life counterpart could have been. However, there are theories out there that claim she's some kind of Looney Tunes young child who simply imagines all of those who are around her. And frankly, these theories that go well beyond the scope of reason and sanity aren't worth your time. You should be out riding a bike, or smelling a flower, or even better yet, actually meeting someone in person. Who knows? You may actually discover what physical contact is before you reach the age of 40. Number 18. SpongeBob SquarePants Theory how Mr. Krabs Rescued Pearl. Fans of stuff seem to have all the theories that explain everything to the nth degree, or more often than not. Or better yet, they can find stories and hidden messages where none actually exist. Is that the case with this SpongeBob SquarePants fan theory? Well, let's have a look. So, for those of you that know the show, there's a character called Mr. Krabs, who is that's right, a crab. But his daughter, named Pearl, is somewhat weirdly a whale. However, if you are prepared to suspend your disbelief enough to watch talking drawings of underwater creatures doing hilarious stuff, then you can most likely extend that to the other unreal aspects of this animation. I mean, does it really bother you that this is not something that makes sense? Does any of it 
make sense? Do you really need answers for absolutely everything? Anyways, the theory apparently goes that Pearl would be rescued by Mr. Krabs from whale hunters, and it's suggested that Mr. Krabs actually found Pearl laying beside her dead mother who had been killed by a fisherman, or whale hunters, and so Mr. Krabs rescued the baby whale and adopted her. It is sad, but it's also cute, but what do you think? And do you like to imagine all the things that are not explained ever in your favorite shows? Let's get stuck in this one in the comments section down below. Number 17. Postman Pat has fathered all the kids in town. Oh dear, this is an unfortunate one. There is an old joke about how people resembling the milkman, but what about the postman? In particular, how about all the kids in Greendale looking a lot like their local friendly mail delivery worker, Postman Pat? Well, now that you mention it, here we are, this is the internet, and we're all constantly subjected to everyone's opinions and theories about absolutely everything. And therefore, it stands to reason that some pervert on the internet has come up with an idea involving Postman Pat being a womanizing scoundrel who fathered all the children in town. This silly theory would suggest that all of the children in the village share some features with the very busy postman himself. From his big nose, which everyone seems to have, there are a lot of kids with red hair or glasses, both of which are Postman Pat's signature looks. I mean, what does any of it really mean, and can we please stop thinking about Postman Pat boning his way around the Dales? It's not really good for any of us. Number 16. Donald Duck has severe PTSD. While it seems that a lot of people have way too much time on their hands while they ponder the possible backstories of fictional animated characters, here's a clue. They mostly don't have any. Lighten up and enjoy yourselves a bit more. You may be overthinking. However, even though a lot of these theories seem a bit silly, it's impossible to unhear some of them when you're exposed to them. And I'm sorry about that, but here's another one. According to some bloke on the internet, Donald Duck is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. This evidence comes from Donald having appeared in a series of shorts in which he fought the Japanese and was still a reasonably balanced character. He was then drafted and shipped off to the big war. And then according to this theory, he returned a completely different duck. After this, Donald was prone to fits of rage, full of anger, and became increasingly violent and unstable. And apparently there's even a scene in a cartoon from 1938 where Donald tries to foil a thief by setting up a camera. But a similar scene from a cartoon in 1945 has the duck losing his shiz at his nephews about the problem. Well, it isn't definitive, but they do have a point. He is indeed a very angry duck. Number 15. SpongeBob SquarePants Theory. The characters are the seven deadly sins. Here we are with yet another SpongeBob SquarePants theory. You simply can't move on the old internet these days without tripping over one of these. This time around, the brainiac behind the theories has suggested that each character in the cartoon actually represents one of the seven deadly sins. This, as a concept, isn't actually all too lame. It's a good way to create a bunch of diverse cartoon characters with a simple and obvious flaw that becomes the focus of their character development and their comedy potential. That makes a lot of sense, so it's not exactly horribly dark or offensive, really. The theory goes like this. Patrick is the sloth, because he's super lazy, so that's an easy one. Gary, SpongeBob's pet snail, is gluttony, since all he does is eat. Plankton is envy, on the account of his fixation on stealing Mr. Krabs' secret formula. Mr. Krabs is, of course, greed, because he loves money. Squidward is always angry, and therefore represents wrath. Sandy is pride, because she's so competitive. And SpongeBob himself is lust although this one is on wobblier ground for obvious reasons. The theorist says that in this case, it just means excessive love for others. Well, okay then. Number 14. Charlie Brown is dying of cancer. Good grief. Is this where we are now? Can we not just look at something without turning it inside out to make it miserable? Is the world not bleak enough for all of us? It would seem not, because some joker has gone ahead and come up with a whole theory that includes Charlie Brown being sick with cancer. Great. They say that the biggest clue is that Charlie Brown is bald. Right then. Because, you know, it couldn't have just been simply an artistic choice, and the character could have just been drawn that way, in keeping with his misfortune. 
Then in all of the wisdom, the theorist says that Charlie Brown's down and out personality is another clue. Well, that's just rude. For starters, while living with cancer is incredibly hard, that doesn't mean that the millions of people with the disease are going around moaning on about everything, does it? In fact, it's often the opposite. Beyond this, they then go out to add their theory that as he's dealing with an existential crisis that are much deeper than any eight-year-old should, this, they say, shows that he's actually in a hospital bed, fading away and projecting his sadness into his dreams. It's utter nonsense, and I'm sorry to clutter up your brains with such atrocious guff. Number 13. The animals in Winnie the Pooh represent mental illness. While it could be seen that the characters in A. A. Milne's beloved Winnie the Pooh stories each have some kind of personality disorder, it should be noted that the Disney interpretation of each of these characters emphasizes those things and adds a whole different neurotic element to the characters themselves. The books are gentle and slow in tone, and although the personality traits are present, the Disney versions are louder and much more aggressively magnified. Anyways, it's possible to ascribe a personality disorder to almost anyone these days. That seems to be something the internet is really into doing right now. You literally cannot move for so-called experts having opinions about narcissists. And it seems as though everyone may be a narcissist, which includes Rabbit. Yes, really. Also, Winnie the Pooh? Well, he's declared to have ADHD, the inattentive type, and a smattering of OCD. Piglet suffering from generalized anxiety disorder. Eeyore is dysthemic, a type of depression, and Tigger has ADHD, the kind with hyperactive and impulsive tendencies. So there you go, the internet says so, and they know all there is to know, right? Number 12. Nemo doesn't exist in Finding Nemo. He's just a figment of Marlin's imagination. Disney Company has a lot to answer for, but making up dopey theories to explain their films, that's not really improving in anything, to be perfectly honest. Here We Are For Your Eyeballs, or Ear Holes, or whatever, is a nonsense theory about a Pixar film, Finding Nemo. This theory purports that the character of Nemo actually does not exist at all, the suggestion being that Nemo is only a figment of his father Marlin's imagination. They say that the name Nemo translates from the Latin as meaning no one or nobody, which means that the title would kind of mean finding no one. That's all rather bleak, but don't forget there's the seafaring connection with the name Nemo, as in Captain Nemo from Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. So this theory doesn't 100% hold water, pardon the pun. The story in the movie goes that Marlin lost his wife and all but one of his would-be children in the Barracuda attack, the idea being that Nemo was the one surviving egg, but this miserable theory would have it that Marlin just imagined Nemo and really lost all of the eggs as well as his wife. That he made up Nemo to cope with a loss. What a fun one. Number 11. The Awful Truth About Dexter's Lab well, here's a totally legitimate theory that someone scraped off the bottom of the barrel in the deepest cesspool that is Reddit, so it may not be all it's cracked up to be. Apparently, someone has decided that since Dexter is the world's smartest boy who does all of these extraordinary experiments in his lab, and then Dee Dee comes along and blows them all up, that it's somehow a clue to a hidden message in the cartoon. The thing that this Reddit genius seems to think is weird is how Dexter doesn't seem to care that much when Dee Dee breaks everything. This, they say, is evidence that what's really going on here is that one of Dexter's experiments blew up his family and killed them all. Right then. And the family in the show is simply one that he fashioned through one of his scientific experiments. This, they say, is what really happened in Dexter's lab, so fine, whatever, you do you, Reddit brainiac. Number 10. The Flintstones actually took place in a post-apocalyptic hellscape. Here we have the super fun idea that the Flintstones is not actually a cartoon representation of the Stone Age at all, but rather it's set in a post-apocalyptic future where the whole world has been bombed all to hell and people are living in a back to the Stone Age style. Well, that's a fun one, isn't it? We all need to imagine such things, I'm sure. Although during the era when the Flintstones was created, there was a huge and constant threat of nuclear annihilation, which is bound to have some sort of impact on the creation 
end of most things during that time. Who can really say? Except that everything about the Flintstones is meant to be in the Stone Age proper, and the future stuff, well, that was happening in the other Hanna-Barbera classic, The Jetsons. In that show, it does seem that as though the Earth down below has been abandoned, and people are all living in those pod things above the ground and flying about in space cars and whatnot. Given what we know now, it may not be too inaccurate of a representation of the possible future in store, and when those sea levels begin to rise, you know. Anyhow, the Flintstones may or may not have been some futuristic hellscape thing in which life on Earth has been dumped back millions of years or whatever, but they also have people living alongside dinosaurs, and they have cars, even if they are feet-powered. So, you know, it wasn't exactly trying to take itself too seriously. That's the point of most of these cartoons, you know? Try not to look too deep. There isn't much to see, I promise you. Number 9. Tom and Jerry is Nazi Propaganda Oh, they really went for it, didn't they? Even Tom and Jerry isn't safe from the internet and its enormous poking stick. Well, the reasons that this theory has even come about are super vague and basically nonsense. Since the First World War, the British soldiers were known as Tommies and the Germans were called Jerry's. The First World War, in case you're not aware of, was nothing to do with the Nazis. In fact, there were no Nazis when that war even happened. So I'm not quite quite sure if there's anything at all to this. The cartoon animals having the names Tom and Jerry, that's not exactly conclusive. The theory goes on to then say that it's somehow Nazi propaganda, because in the cartoons it's Jerry that's the good guy and he always wins. Really though, is that all they've got? Number 8. The Simpsons Family Are All Secret Geniuses This fan theory is really reaching. Like, quite a lot actually. The fan in question has decided for some reason that the Simpsons are all geniuses, but they've just chosen not to show their intelligence. Well, right then. First of all, they are a fictional cartoon. They don't decide things, but they are written that way. And second of all, Homer Simpson. Hello, that's all. Number 7. Aladdin Only Had One Wish Fulfilled the 1992 Disney movie Aladdin had the entire plot revolve around the genie trying to fulfill Aladdin's first wish. So in that classic Disney style, there's another toxic tale of princesses and general garbage that we ignorantly feed to children despite the way in which this trash obviously upholds the patriarchal hierarchy. Anyhow, this is a fan theory that suggests the reason why Aladdin loses his status as a prince after the lamp is stolen by Jafar, apparently the sort of question that keeps people awake at night as it seems to be in an inconsistency in the plot line of this cartoon and who the heck can even live their life without knowing that the story of Disney's Aladdin doesn't make any sense. The thing that they reckon about this is that since they spend the entire movie just working on that one first wish, the fact that he loses his prince stuff doesn't make any sense. So instead of saying, well heck, this movie has a huge gaping plot hole, it kinda sucks, some people are like, well, that that must mean that there are hidden secret messages that only I can see. The theory that they put forward to fill in that massive story oversight is that all of the events that take place after Aladdin's first wish were actually made up by the genie to try and push Aladdin to becoming a prince. It's really utterly boring. Let's look into another steaming heap of turds. <laughs> I mean, theories, shall we? Number 6. Andy's Parents Are Divorcing People do get divorced, it happens all the time, and it can even happen in the movies. I know, that's a real shocker to you. But despite the fact that there's no actual reference to anything of the sort in the Toy Story movies, it's become a fixation for some fans of the film. This, it could be argued, is one of the ways that people come to terms with their own issues in real life. Sometimes seeing the tough things represented on the screen can be a way for real life people to work through their own complex feelings. Or indeed, the depiction of life's troubles in the movies and television can offer comfort that you are not alone. There are plenty of examples of this, but then there are plenty of films that do not actually address the issues at all, and yet people seem compelled to complicate them. Toy Story is one such movie. Not content to watch a children's movie about toys and leave it at that, some joker has had a theory that basically says it's designed to make fans depressed. What a fun one. The person claims that Andy's parents are probably going through a divorce 
Force in the first movie, although since his father is never seen or mentioned in any of the films, it's possible that this is the case, as is commonplace in many American families. Representing families other than standard white nuclear families is not something that movies have been that brilliant about doing, but if that is what is vaguely the case in this one, then it doesn't mean that it needs to be depressing. For many children, this is actually what their family looks like, so there's not really a need to make a big point about it or a judgment. And if Pixar simply built the story this way without making it a big deal, then it's kind of like, I don't know, progress perhaps? Number 5. Dark Shrek Theory Reveals Fiona is a Cannibal the subversive storytelling in Shrek is not enough for internet speculators. No, these online purveyors of unsolicited opinions have decided that the character of Fiona in Shrek was apparently a cannibal before the movie story begins. Right, in the imaginary space of time and total void where the movie doesn't exist, that's when it happened, right? Here we are again taking these suggestions of people on Reddit seriously. When will we learn that this is no place to get our information? This particular fan theory states that when Fiona was locked in the tower for all of those years before the story even began, she may have eaten all of the knights that came to try and rescue her. They say that this idea rests upon a couple of things in which, according to some nincompoop on Reddit, are obvious when you look at the film. Now, they say that she was locked away for 20 years and, as such, having spent so long in isolation, she would have picked up a few odd habits. Now, I don't know about you. But to call cannibalism an odd habit? Well, that's a bit of a stretch. But hey, that's just me being an old stick in the mud, right? They also say that this would have been the only way for her to survive. Just a reminder, this is an imaginary fairy tale cartoon. The need to be all that time explainable and realistic whatever and whatnot, that's not really essential. They also say that because she's cursed to be an ogre, it just goes to prove that she's capable of eating humans. But pardon me, I thought this movie was basically all about subverting expectations and upending stereotypes. And finally, this internet joker says that because there are the bones of a knight, that's visual proof that Fiona ate him. Oh, and the massive cauldron was where she cooked him up. Right then. Number 4. The Fly from Emperor's New Groove so, The Emperor's New Groove is a jolly silly story about an Incan emperor who gets turned into a llama. The theory that makes this whole story much darker than the movie appears to be is one that's been put forward by another person on Reddit wasting their life pondering things and sharing them in a veritable cesspool of the dregs of humanity. But that's a personal choice. You do you, I guess. But honestly, do you really need to do you all up in everyone else's face like this? Anyways, there's a scene in this Disney film in which the Emperor Llama guy goes into the forest and things are all a little bit scary for a minute. During said scene, there is a moment where a fly lands on a spider's web and shrieks, help me, help me, help me, help me, a bunch before it gets killed and then eaten by the spider. The thing about this is that in the film, the only animals that can speak are the ones that used to be human. You know, like our pal the llama. So according to the theorist, this means that we watched a human get killed by a spider, and that's somehow extremely terrible. I mean, it's not very Disney, but the anthropomorphic characters in all of the Disney films are not exactly like watching a nature documentary where there's a separation between the humans and the animals, but what it is is all utter nonsense. Number 3. Why Garfield Hates Mondays The cartoon cat named Garfield famously hates Mondays but why might this be? Some fans do have a theory that is extremely basic and not exactly the biggest thrill fest. They purport to have a notion that Garfield, the lasagna-loving lazy feline of comic strip fame, hates Mondays because of his namesake, President James Garfield, who was assassinated on a Monday. Possibly. He was actually shot by his would-be assassin, but he didn't die until of two full months later, so who could really say? And that was a big one, and really worth all of our time now, wasn't it? Number 2. Mystery Inc. is actually a cult. There's a theory that Mystery Inc., the gang that tours around with Scooby-Doo, well, it's actually a cult. Sure, the era in which it's set and from which the cartoon first originated was a particularly busy time for cults, but what leads people to reach this particular conclusion? Don't even think about it. 
They say that Fred is the handsome leader, that Daphne is fashionable and pretty and just follows Fred around, that Velma is clever, and Shaggy has conversations with a dog. They say that this is exactly what a cult is like. But I beg to differ. This is what teenagers are like, and some of them are stoned, you know. Cults are kind of more into the control and power aspects of stuff, rather than just driving about some solving mysteries with scaredy cats of a dog. Or perhaps I'm involved in these nefarious misdeeds as well, and this is all just a smokescreen. Number 1. SpongeBob SquarePants Theory The characters are all on different drugs. Okay, so we had a theory that these characters are all uh, different deadly sins, sort of, and now how about we imagine that they're all high on different drugs? Well, why the heck not? So SpongeBob himself is on magic mushrooms, demonstrated apparently by his wild imagination and his extremities of mood, uh, like a good or bad trip, you know. Mr. Krabs and Mrs. Puff both are cocaine fiends, which makes them irritable and paranoid, and they both allegedly show signs of withdrawal. Squidward, he's all about the smack, yet apparently the guy is on heroin because he's rubbish at work, has mood swings, and avoids eye contact. Patrick is smoking all the weed because he's super relaxed and eats a lot like he has the munchies, and I'm just about done talking about all of it. Well, that's quite enough of this silliness. Now go run around outside for a bit. Stop overthinking cartoons so much. I mean, really. This way madness lies. Do you have a bananas theory that you need to get off your chest? Do it now in the comments down below and then go and enjoy yourself. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.